So, you have a new Marvel movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I figure this could be our first foray into the world of martial arts, you know, other than that Iron Fist show we did. Uh, no, that never happened. Thank uh, you. No, it did. I remember with that guy from Game of Thrones? <laughs> no, we never <laughs> did that. So what's the movie? <laughs> well, sir, I figure never we could happened. do a movie about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Bracelets. Isn't it Ten Rings? Yeah, but I thought it could look cool if they were worn around the wrists, bracelets. you know, and I think at a certain point a ring becomes a bracelet, scientifically speaking. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, I think at a certain point a bracelet becomes a ring, but then if a ring expands, it's always a ring. That sounds like it makes sense. Okay, ten rings it is. <laughs> Amazing. So what happens in the movie? Well, we're gonna meet Chung chi right? But he calls himself Sean, and he lives in San Francisco. Okay. And he's friends with this girl named Katie, and they work as valets together. How do we know they're best friends? Because one of her first lines is, we've been friends for ten years. <laughs> oh, best friends love stating how long you've been best friends with them. <laughs> yeah, they do. So they're in love, I imagine. I mean, one's a boy and one's a girl. Girl. No, they're actually, they're just friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so anyway, one day That's they're right. taking the bus together and Shang-Chi gets attacked by a bunch of assassins. Oh no. Yeah, so he's gonna suddenly reveal that he's like an insanely good martial artist and he's gonna have this incredible fight scene with them on this bus. Yeah, he's fighting some bad guys awesome. on a bus. Yeah, they're like doing martial arts and he's using the environment, you know, he uses his jacket at a certain point. Oh, a relatively grounded, well choreographed <laughs> fight scene? That's actually refreshing. And the bus's brakes get cut and Katie has to drive the bus and Shang-Chi she dives and the bus gets cut in half. Oh, there's the Marvel over the top list. Okay, gotcha. So Katie's like, hey, what's up with you secretly there it being goes. a martial arts master? And he's like, yeah, I'm secretly a martial arts master and I gotta go see my sister now. Oh, he does? Yeah, see, he got this postcard that he thinks is from her, so he needs to fly to China because he thinks she's That's in right. danger too. Gotcha. So he's like, bye, Katie, I gotta go. And Katie's like, no, I'm coming with you. Oh, best friends love coming on dangerous adventures with you <laughs> off of little to no information. <laughs> yeah, they do. So wait, why is Katie? Yeah. Going? So we can have some comic relief around that people can explain yeah. things to. Oh, very helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so what happens when they get there? Well, we're gonna meet Shang-Chi's sister, Sha Ling. And what's her deal? Well, after their mom died, their father, Wen Wu, put Shang-Chi through torturous, brutal training for years, right? That's terrible. Yeah, but she wasn't allowed to train with the men, so, you know, it was pretty unfair to her. Yeah, I mean, what a pretty jerk unfair. of a father. How come she doesn't get the brutal torture? <laughs> oh, wait, I don't know how I feel about this morally. <laughs> since she couldn't train with them, she watched them and taught herself how to be even better than them. But how could she learn, like, the grabbing moves and stuff? Wouldn't she need people to practice with? No, not even. Oh, okay. So anyway, it turns out that Shang-Chi receiving a postcard was actually a setup by his father and he has them both captured. Oh, no. Yeah, so they head to his place because he wanted to basically reunite the family and he thinks he knows how to bring their mom back from the dead using these pendants and a map and stuff. Wait, so why did he send assassins after them? Oh, well, he says he knew they wouldn't be able to kill his children. So then why try? So we can have some fight scenes in the movie. That's a good point. So what's this guy's deal anyway? Oh, uh, well, he's 4,000 years old. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he has these ten rings, and he leads a group called the Ten Rings. So what do these rings do, exactly? Oh, all kinds of stuff, sir. They make you immortal. Also, other things <laughs> involving energy or something. Oh, that's pretty vague, man. <laughs> yeah, this way they can do whatever I want them to do from scene to scene. Smart. And so he's actually the real Mandarin, and that Trevor Slattery guy from Iron Man 3, that was his dude. Oh man, I love that we can retroactively make our unpopular decisions seem calculated and deliberate <laughs> and important. It is pretty sweet that we can do that, sir. And so pretty what are we sweet. saying the Ten Rings organization <laughs> does exactly? Oh, they've been doing stuff for thousands of years so immense you can't possibly fathom it, but also vague enough that you probably wouldn't have heard of it. Gotcha. <laughs> God, how many underground organizations that secretly control everything are there in the MCU at this point? Thousands. Wow, yeah, maybe we should find a new thing. No. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so when Wu explains that he's been no. getting these messages from their mother from the grave and Shang-Chi's like, Dad, she's gone. You sound crazy. He doesn't believe that his father may have stumbled upon something crazy like that? No, sir. He's like, there's no way. You sound insane, Papa. He doesn't think that his 4,000 year old immortal father could have possibly stumbled upon something in this vein. Doesn't even entertain the idea and he's right. Oh, okay, great. So anyway, all the good characters get put in a cell because they don't want to cooperate. Oh man, it's going to be hard to get out of there. 
actually. It's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, Xia Ling had already escaped from there, and they're left unguarded. And Trevor Slattery is down there, and he can help them escape. Oh, wow, that is convenient. It is. And Trevor has this little furry mythical creature friend that makes little squeaking noises that only he can understand. How? Unclear. <laughs> okay, that's kind of weird. But I guess it could be fun if it's just a couple of, you know, playful, <laughs> semi-understanding back and forth. The creature's going to give precise driving directions that are crucial to the plot. <laughs> oh, it is. Okay. You see, they need to go to this place called Tallow, where their mom is from, but they need to drive through a mythical forest to get the, in a beautiful BMW. <laughs> okay, seems like you're probably getting a lot of money to specify that, so they get to this place and they find out that Wenwu's plan is actually really, really bad. Oh, it is. You see, this big friggin' soul-sucking demon called Dweller in Darkness is pretending to be their mom to trick Wenwu into releasing him. Oh, soul-sucking demons are tight. <laughs> what? No, they're not. You're right, I don't know what possessed me to say that. Anyway, so then Katie's gonna do a couple of hours of archery. Oh, that's nice. Just for fun or for the story? It's so she can have something to do in the third act. Yep. Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, everything's been pretty much explained now, so at this point in a story, this kind of character either dies or picks up a new skill yeah. for the third act. That makes sense. So then there's gonna be this big fight between the people of Tallow and the Ten Rings with color-coordinated weaponry. Of course, blue versus red. <laughs> Fantastic. And meanwhile, Wen Wu's gonna start punching this wall to try to release his dead wife, but he's actually releasing these tiny little soul-sucking demons. Oh no. Yeah, so then all the human characters need to join forces and fight. An army of soulless CGI enemies that the characters can violently kill without the audience feeling weird about it. Exactly. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow. And then Shang-Chi has to fight his father. Oh, wow, a grounded fight with very personal stakes? That's actually a nice change of... And they shoot colored energy blasts at each other, and a giant demon pops out, and a giant dragon pops out and fights it too. <laughs> oh, there's the Marvel over the top. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Thank yeah, and you. so when Wu dies, and then the next ten minutes are gonna be just whatever the computer is able to render. <laughs> oh, they can render a whole visual mess of craziness. Can it be super colorful, but also somehow entirely gray? You know it. <laughs> Amazing. And so then Shang-Chi manages to Amazing. kill the demon with the ten rings and save the day. Uh, so what are the ten rings exactly? Do we find out? Oh, stay tuned. Oh? Yeah, we're gonna have a post credit <laughs> scene where it's like, oh, these are probably made out of something that's gonna be important eventually. Stay tuned. Nice. No stay better tuned. way to end a Marvel movie than with a commercial for future projects, and that should about do it, actually. <laughs> what is that? That's just the Marvel movie checklist. There's a checklist? Of course there's a checklist, and you've done great, my friend. <laughs> Big messy CGI battle in the third act, <laughs> secret evil organization, color code and energy blasts we got cameos yeah. from other marvel movies trevor slattery wong and abomination does the main character remove his shirt to reveal a six pack at a certain point he does yeah great physique well fantastic <laughs> if we could just add a tease that another marvel character is off doing something important that'd be great too on it <laughs> hey look like it or not uh ryan george kills this pitch meeting for shang chi like it's <laughs> It, it, it checks all the boxes off of what you expect from a Marvel movie at this point. Now, I will say the cultural setting is a change of pace for Marvel, obviously, because we haven't had an Asian superhero yet. So that part's cool. But you kind of got all the same things minus a sky beam uh, in, in this one that compares it to a lot of other Marvel movies. So that's we're kind of getting the same thing here. If you checked out my review, you know what my thoughts are on it. If you haven't, check it out right up there. It's right there. I enjoyed it. It's a fun movie, but it's got some issues for me. I mean, it's just, there's some things in there that I, I was hoping for that just didn't really pan out. And it did feel like normal Marvel stuff. Now, it's better than Black Widow. Way better than Black Widow. I didn't even really care for Black Widow all that much. I haven't watched it again since I watched it the first time. It's better than a lot of the other origin movies for single characters. Uh, I'll probably still put it up there with Black Panther, I'd probably put Black Panther a little bit above just because the music is better. That's just me. Some people love it. They're like 9.5 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10, whatever. I'd probably give it like a seven, mainly because that third act for me was not very good at all. It was just what we're used to from other movies. So that's just me. We've talked about this a little bit already, but let me know your thoughts on the pitch meeting for sure because Ryan George kills it. Like he, he, he kills it on this one. Just how this movie compares to other Marvel movies. He had the checklist, which was hilarious. Also how there's certain things that just are not explained, like the 10 rings for sure. You know, they, I like how they did change the aesthetic of them. They're not rings, but they're on the wrist and they're on, I guess, the forearm. That was cool, but they don't really explain where they are, where they came from. We'll get that in another movie, I'm sure. Uh, Trevor Slattery being able to understand the language that this mythical creature is speaking. Uh, it's just, there's a number of things in there that are just like, all right, we'll just, 
we'll just take it. We don't need answers, I guess. It's a Marvel movie. We're happy. We're in the theater. Whatever. But they need to explain some of this stuff. But I like how Ryan George speaks to those things and also the checklist of the Marvel items that need to be uh, done <laughs> to be considered a Marvel film. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's a formula. It is a formula. Some people say if it's not broke, don't fix it. But you, you need to fix it because it's getting, it's getting boring to an extent at least for me it's, it's getting to a place where it's like all right i feel like i've seen this already uh we need to do something different change it up a little bit give me something where i feel like all right this this is this is not normal marvel kind of like episode four we got with what if with dr strange if he uh lost his heart or i guess the use of his heart or lost his heart instead of his hands however it's however they titled it but that was a great episode I hear the zombie one is pretty good, so I'm gonna watch that today. They need to take their movies and handle them similar to how they're handling their TV shows. And I say that in a way of like, just be a little more risky with your stories. You know, like take a chance, try something new. Uh, uh, don't go the safe route that you've been going for years. We've seen all this already. So uh, I, my hope is that things change a little bit. You know, Eternals is coming. I like that's going to be kind of the same uh, same beat. They got a great director there, but uh, I'm wondering kind of how that's going to go. No Way Home, same deal. I feel like, you know, we're going we're gonna to see some things that are more nostalgic from that one, but it might have the same kind of appeal. But it's going to be a little more grand because of the whole multiverse situation. So that's just me. Marvel is kind of, uh, you know, playing it safe with their movies still, and that's unfortunate. So hopefully things will change up in these next few movies that are coming out. We'll see. Let me know your thoughts on the pitch meeting and on Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings in the comments below if you haven't already. Uh, I'm interested in what you guys think, so uh, let me know. To my hyper crew, Brian Tidwell, Steve-O, Slepnir, K6013, Dash Milner, Daniel Lopez, and Jonathan Cedarland. Thank you guys so much for supporting me with that hyper crew tier. I really thank you. Uh, you get a verbal shout out by me in every video. If you are interested in memberships, you're watching this, you're like, how do I join? Hit that join button down below. It gives you more information there. Also to all my members and my subscribers, thanks so much for supporting the channel, whether it is monetarily or you're hitting that subscribe button and helping the channel grow. I really appreciate it. And it goes a long way. I really do appreciate it. So thank you. While you're still here, hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Helps more people see the videos and it lets me know exactly what you guys want to see more of. Also, check out our most popular videos on the channel over here. You can see our most recent reaction right up here. If you've seen all of that, I'll see you guys in the comments. We'll talk about this.